Good morning, everyone. As Chris mentioned, my name is Patty. I came to Bridgepoint in 2014 as a result of someone's pray for one, so how cool is that? I thought I was coming, I th when I came, I thought I was committing a cardinal sin the first time I walked in the doors, but I was definitely led here by the Spirit. My parents grew up here in EP, across the street from one another, and I spent my younger years in both of the same houses. I also work here in EP, so that definitely makes me a townie. And yes, you're right, I don't cross the bridge often. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you a little background about me. My parents were married at the age of 17, by the age of 27, had six children, and at the age of 37, divorced. My mother, who pretty much raised us on her own, made sure the six of us were at church every Sunday. And we also went to the neighborhood Catholic school. I loved it there. I'm so grateful for that part of my life because it's where the foundation of Jesus began. I fondly, I fondly remember loving Jesus so much as a little girl. I truly thought I was gonna become a nun. Specifically, the flying nun. Now that discovery about me would definitely raise an eyebrow if you knew the girl I became in my teenage years. You see, just like my mom, I also got pregnant at 16, and our parents decided that this child, a boy, would be given up for adoption for the chance at a better life than, a six, than what a 16-year-old could offer him. Back then, you did what you were told, period. I bore him, I held him, I named him, and he was taken from me. At the age of 18, I moved out of my house with pretty much only the guidance of the world and a craving to find something more than I knew. I spent much of my time looking in every corner and under every rock I could find to fill a void that was inside of me, regardless of where those corners and rocks were, it didn't matter. I made a lot of very poor choices that led to some terrible experiences in awful places. I'm not gonna get into the details of where that desperation led me and the things I lost, but I will tell you I was definitely blinded to see, and I did not have a heart to hear. I was on a quest to succeed, regardless of what got in my way. It didn't matter. I certainly didn't have a good role model in my life, and I had walked away from God. I went on to marry at 23, thought I was old enough. And at the age of 30, my husband and I decided to start our family. Finally, Jesus broke through. On February 6th, God gave us a son. A son. In a predominantly female family. Do you believe it? I was so grateful to him. Not only that, as God would have it, 14 months later on April 4th, 1991, he also graced us with a beautiful little girl. I was over the top filled with love, fondly. Finally, I felt like God was showing me what he intended for me and I went back to church to honor him. My life with my children was sheer blissfulness every single day, honest. We had so much fun together and when they approached school years, I was the mom who cried at the bus stop once they got on the bus because now it was back to stricter disciplines of homework, bedtimes, the sort of stuff we're called to do as parents. Shortly after my daughter was born, that des desperation, that void came back with a vengeance. And I didn't have enough of a relationship with the Lord to call on him. As a result, I began to make poor choices again and my world got dark real fast. My husband and I argued a lot, 
and with reasons that I thought were valid, convinced by the enemy that it would be a better life for everyone, I divorced him. Seven years later, in 1998, I married again. A good man, who you all know as Ray, or maybe Marine Man. Our new life se se I'm sorry, our new life seemed to be going on well. We're all happy and healthy, enjoying life together as a family. Definitely lots of bumps in the road, but nonetheless, it was good. But as life would have it, this one night in March of 2014, Everything changed, and we were blindsided. I was changing for bed when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I felt this overwhelming feeling of warmth and peacefulness. It was as if I was being wrapped up in a warm cocoon. My body went limp, and I heard the words, I have you. You're going to be OK. The words weren't audible for everyone to hear. It was sort of like the words were just engraved into my heart. I didn't understand what had just happened, nor did I know what it was. I can only tell you it was something I couldn't deny. Confused, I finished changing and got into bed to watch a little TV when minutes later, my son came into our room to hand me his phone with a look of fear on his face. Confused, I took the phone and on the other side of the line, a doctor from Mass General Hospital introduced herself and advised me that my 22-year-old daughter had been rushed into the hospital and was in critical condition. I should get there now. I immediately called her dad and we all went to fight for our daughter. In spite of the fight that night, her organs were shutting down, and we had to take her off life support the next day. Our Chelsea never came home with us again. There is not a day that goes by that I don't thank the Lord calling me Chelsea's mom and for giving us the time we had with her. Chelsea's young 22 years taught us many lessons, good and bad, and God has showed up in ways that are so unimaginable, including showing up in my closet that night, holding me and letting me know that he had me and he was with me. I only get to be the girl that stands before you today because Jesus interceded, because Jesus brought me up from the ashes because Jesus is with me. The girl I was, she would not have been able to capable, she would not have been capable of enduring even just one minute of this. I would have been gone shortly after Chels. He and only he saved me from the destruction and he continues to save me on a daily basis, including right now. In the past eight years, I have learned that Jesus truly is my only counsel. I have learned that his promises are true. I have learned that even so sometimes a girl just needs someone to talk to. There isn't a person alive who can counsel me nor direct me and speak to me like he can. He is also the only one who brings me a sense of peace unlike anything I have ever experienced. He is always available and every single time I ask, he freely takes the burdens that this world constantly gives. He redeems me in a way that always leaves me with joy and restores a song and dance to my heart. He truly has never forsaken me and has never left me even when I walked away from him. Only he can give me what I need, and I am so grateful. He did not give up on this wandering sheep. He's constantly working on me and with me, 
teaching me to be patient, to be quiet, and to wait on him. I have witnessed his miracles around me a thousand times over, but he definitely has his work cut out with me, and he never gives up. I've also learned that this life is not just about the circumstances that the darkness throws at me. It's more about him and how he chooses to use those circumstances for his good. There is so much more light on the other side of the darkness than I ever, ever imagined. I am crazy about Jesus. I love talking about him, and I love talking with him. I love discussing the word and sharing the ways he has shown up in my life and continues to show up even when I haven't called on him. Undoubtedly, Jesus has changed my life, and I stand before you to profess, without him there is nothing. With him, life can be so abundant and beautiful, regardless of the struggles, if we invite him. Yes, even for this worthless, undeserving sinner, he died on that cross. Instead of regrets for all my transgressions, and I have so many, because of his grace, what I have is reminders of his sovereignty. In ending today, I'd like to share just one of the many promises that God gave us from Isaiah 61. Isaiah said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. In a simple psalm, 118, 17, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and the Holy Spirit for inspiring me today toward obedience. Amen, everyone.